ሲሆን ክብራንና ክብራት ኢትዮጵያን እንደመወጀና እህቶች ብዙዎቻችሁ ላታቆም ይችላልላችሁ በተለይም ወጣት የሆናችሁ ኢትዮጵያ እኔ ጎሽ ወልደ ይባላለሁ በኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ ላብና መስዋዕትነት የተማርኩ በቀድሞ መንግስት በተለያዩ የሥራ ኃላፊነቶች የኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ ያገለገሉ ከዛም ከሀገር ተሰድጄ አንድነት ዋና ሉዓላዊ ህዝብ የተከበረ የብሔሮች ብሔረሰቦች እኩልነት የተጠበቀ የተታለች ሰላማዊ ዲሞክራሲያዊ ኢትዮጵያ እንድትመሰረት ለረጅም ጊዜ የታገልኩ ክሩ ኢትዮጵያ ወይ ዘመታይን አቋሪቄ ዛሬ በድንገት በቃ ያልኩበት ምክንያት የጠቅላይ ሚኒስትር ዶክተር አብይ አህመድን ራእይና የለውጥና የታደሶ አጀንዳ ለመደገፍ ብሎም ኢትዮጵያ ወዳጆች እንዲደግፉት በትህትና ለማሳሰብ ነው እኔ ከዶክተር አብይ አህመድ ጋር የገለጠ ውቀለኝ የማቸው ቴሌቪዥን ላይ ብቻ ነው ነገር ግን የኢትዮጵያን ሁኔታዎች እንደ ተከታተልኩልና እንደ ገመገምኳቸው ከሆነ እግዚአብሔር ግዜውን ጠብቆ ለኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ መሪነት ያጫቸውና የመረጣቸው ግለሰብ ተብናቸው በእያምናለሁ በተጨማሪም ሰፋ ላለ አመለካከታቸው ለበሳል አተሳሰባቸው ለርቱ አንደበታቸው ለቆራጥነታቸውና ለሰከነ አመራራቸው አክብሮቴንና አናቆቴን ገልጻለሁ በርግጥ የጠቅላይ ሚኒስትሩ የለውጥና የታደሶ አጀንዳ በአብዛኛው በጅምር ላይ ይገኛል ወደ ፖሊሲዎችና ፕሮግራሞች የተመንዘሮ በቅርቡ በፍጥነት ተግባራዊ እንደሚሆን ይተቀቃል ይሁን እንጂ እጅግ አጭር በሆነ ጊዜ ውስጥ በጠቅላይ ሚኒስትሩ የተወሰዱ ተልምጃዎች የተላለፉት መልእክቶች የተቀየሱት ዘፈ ብዙ አቅጣጫዎች በአይነታቸው ሆነ በመጠናቸው በኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ ህይወት ላይ የሚኖራቸውን ተጽዕኖ ከተውኑ አሳንሶ ለማየት አቻለሁ ግዙፍ ነው የዛሬውን ትውልድ ብቻ ሳይሆን የተከታታይ ትውልዶቹን ህይወት ወደ በጎ ለመለወጥ ግዙፍ አስተዋጽኦ እንደሚኖራቸው አልተራጠሩ ጥቂቶቹን ብቻ ለመጥቀስ ያህል የኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ መብቶችና መሰረታዊ ነጻነቶች ህገ መንግስታዊ ጥበቃ እንዲያገኙ ዲሞክራሲያዊ ስርዓትና ተቋማት እንዲገነቡ የፖለቲካ መዳሩ ሰፍቶ የፖለቲካ ተሳፎ እንዲዳበረ ነጻና አቀኛ ዲሞክራሲያዊ ምርጫዎች እንዲካሄዱ የህግ የበላይነት እንዲሰፈን የግል ነጻነቶች እንዲከበሩ የዜጎች እኩልነትና ነጻነቶች እንዲረጋግጡ የኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ ጭብረትና አንድነት እንዲተናከረና በመታሰዱት ሌሎች ሪዮቶች ላይ ጠቅላይ ሚኒስትሩ እጅግ አጭር በሆነ ጊዜ ውስጥ የወሰዱት ቆራጥ ልምጃዎችና የቀየሱት ለውጥ አፍታቻዎች የኢትዮጵያን የፖለቲካ ስርዓት አወቃቀርና አስተራር በማደስ ዘመናዊና ዲሞክራሲያዊ ስለሚያደርጉ ይደገፉ ይገባል የሚል ጽሎነት አለ። በኢኮኖሚ፣ በማህበራዊ፣ በቴክኖሎጂና ሌሎች ተዛማጅ መስኮች የተታሉት ግቦችም ኢትዮጵያ ሀገራችንንና ህዝባችንን ወደ ከፍተኛ የድገትና የብልጽግና ደረጃ እንደሚያሸጋግሩ ትርትር የለኝም። በተጨማሪም የኢትዮጵያ ህዝብ በተጓዳኝ የሚጎናን ጽፋቸው ነጻነቶች የመረመረና የበተራ ጽሎታና ክሎት በማዳበር ኢትዮጵያን ለታሪካዊ የኢኮኖሚና የቴክኖሎጂ መልከት ያመቻቹአታል ያሸጋግሩአታል በየ ይገምታለሁ። ታዲያ በተከሎ ጠቅላይ ሚኒስትሩ ባችር ግዜ ውስጥ ያዝመዘገቡት ክንውኖች ራያቸውና ንጥፈ ሀሳቦቻቸው በተናጥል ሆነ በጅምላ በኢትዮጵያን አስተሳሰብና ስነ ልቦና ላይ እየቀሰቀሱ ያለው የለውጥ የዲሞክራሲና የነጻነት ጥማት በኢትዮጵያ አፍሪካ ታሪክ ውስጥ ለረጅም ጊዜ ታይቶ የማይታወቅ እንትከስተት ነው ለማለት ይቻላል። በመሆኑም ይህንን ራእይና የለውጥ አጀንዳ ከልብ ከመደገፍ ከማበረታታት ለፈጻሚነቱም በነፍስ ወከፍ ሆነ በህብረት በቆራጥነት አብሮ ከመታገል በስተቀር ሌላ አማራጭ አይኖርም። ሊኖርም አይችልም ባንጻሩም የዚ መላ የኢትዮጵያን ህዝብ ቀልብ የታበው ታላቅ ብሔራዊ ራእይና አጀንዳ መደናቀብ ወይ መቀጨት ወይ መቀልበት ከቶኑ ሊታሰብ አይገባም ምክንያቱም አሉታዊ አስከፊ ሆነ ውጤት ሊኖረው ይችላልና ዛሬ የተፈጠረው ድል ካመለጠ ምን ጊዜም ተመልሶ ሊመጣ እንደማይችል ግንዛቤ ማድረጉም ይበቻል ስለዚህ ነው በዚህ ግዜ ለዚህ ራእይና አጀንዳ የኢትዮጵያን ህዝብ ድጋፍ አንገብጋቢነትና ወሳኝነት 
አበክሬ ማስገነዘበው ታዲያ ለጠቅላይ ሚኒስትር ዶክተር አብይ አህመድ አክብሮቴንና አድናቆቴን በድጋሚ እየገለጽ በአገር ቤት ሆነ በውጭ ሀገር የምትኖሩ ኢትዮጵያውያንና ተወልደ ኢትዮጵያን የአደግ ድርጅት አባል ድርጅቶችና አጋር አካላት የኢትዮጵያ ጦር ኃይሎችና የፖሊስ ሰራዊት አባላት በአገር ቤት ወይም በባህር ማዶ ምትንቀሳቀሱ ተቃዋሚ ድርጅቶችና የፖለቲካ ተዋናያን የፕሬስና የሚዲያ ባለሙያዎች ህዝባዊ ድርጅቶች የሙያ ማህበራት አርቶ አደሮች የንግድ ተቋማቶችና ነጋዴዎች መመራን የጤና ባለሙያዎች የፊኔት ባለሙያዎች ክርስቲያኖች ሙስሊሞችና ሌሎች ኢትዮጵያን ሁሉ የጠቅላይ ሚኒስትር ዶክተር አብይ አህመድን ራይና የለውጥ አጀንዳ እስከ ፍጻሜ ይወደረስ በፍቅር በደስታ በእንልታ በኦታ እና በአንድነት ተነስታቹ እንድትደግፉ ከአደረ አጭር በተሰና አታስባለሁ ኢትዮጵያ ለዘላለም ትኖር እግዚአብሔር ኢትዮጵያን ይባርካት በድጋሚ ጎሽ ወልድ የኔኝ አመሰግናለሁ who do not belong to any of these political groupings either armed or political were pointedly and deliberately excluded imagine sir imagine mr chairman and members of the committee the plo the plo's yasser arafat sitting together with the popular fronts george habash to decide on the fate of the state of israel without israel's participation second the conference sent also sent a signal and set the stage for ethiopia's dismemberment through a retrain secession it was a blow a dagger blow aimed at the very heart of the integrity of the ethiopian state system and a serious threat to the integrity of the african political order it's no wonder that the decision outraged millions of ethiopians all over one cannot overstress the deep seated instinctive and fierce resolve of all ethiopians to preserve their national unity and independence that unique independence had been defended by fierce resistance to no less than eight foreign invasions and that had forged a consciousness and pride of national unity and culture found nowhere on the continent of africa those foreign invasions have by no means spared the territory known only in modern times as eritrea in fact of the eight invasions from the south the west and the south and the north have have involved eritrea this was especially surprising for centuries it was the political and the cultural center of ethiopia with the capital at adulis symbol of the independence which others even before the colonial period sought to suppress ethiopia as the cultural political and economic sector of the horn and its coastline of eritrea stood as a vast barrier to both european and arab expansionist designs that the people of it that the people of eritrea had through a process of self determination under the auspices of the united nations had exercised the right to determine and had determined that by deliberately and voluntarily linking their territory in federal association with ethiopia was unfortunately conveniently forgotten any future decision on eritrea mr chairman and members of the committee i would assure you if and when it is taken 
would have to be taken not by the inhabitants of one province but by the people of Ethiopia as a whole. Thirdly, the decision to let in the TPLF, the African counterpart of the Asian Khmer Rouge, I would like to call them the Khmer Noir, Yes. The decision to let in the TPLF and occupy Addis Ababa and grab state power was tragic and inexplicable. How an ideologically intoxicated, ethnically narrowly based guerrilla force, as Francis Lemonde did say in this, this morning's editorial, headed by a radical Stalinist with no experience to raise and administer a family, let alone administer a country of 50 million people, should be asked to march in and assume state responsibility is beyond me to comprehend. And I ask for divine intervention. That must be the first time when a self-declared Stalinist is sanctioned by the United States to take over state power. The upshot of all these decisions and actions is to seriously compromise Ethiopia's fundamental interests. And the country is saddled now with a Stalinist regime which is just as repressive as Mengistu Haile Mariams. But whatever has happened, Mr. Chairman, has happened in London. And it is time to correct mistakes and move on. There is no suggestion on my part at any rate that there was any deliberate plan on behalf of Mr. Cohen or the State Department or the administration in general to put Ethiopia in jeopardy. That has never been suggested. Ethiopia is always in love with Americans and respectful of the traditions and values and democratic institutions of America. So it remains to this very day. But mistakes have been made and it is important, I think, to correct the mistakes and move on. And how can we move on? Well, I think the first thing is that the United States should reaffirm its traditional support for Ethiopia's unity and territorial integrity. The conflict in Eritrea should be resolved within the framework of a united Ethiopia on the basis of some force of federal association. Next. The United States should also work for the speedy democratization of the Ethiopian political system and the institution of multi-party democracy in the country. The U.S. should have as its immediate objective the broadening of the current narrowly based rebel junta so that the vast majority of people excluded from the system under the London arrangements could be embraced and brought into the system. It should also work for the withdrawal of the EPLF and EPRDF occupying, occupying forces from Addis Ababa and other towns and their replacement by a national army and a police representing all ethnic groups in the country. To that end, Mr. Chairman, I urge Assistant Secretary of State Mr. Cohen to invite and preside over a conference of all political groups, both within and outside the country. I particularly urge him to invite, to invite the Coalition of Ethiopian Democratic Forces, which enjoys wide support in Ethiopia. The Ethiopian people love and respect and admire the American people. The United States is the only country with the political and moral stature to usher in democracy in Ethiopia and help defend it against dismemberment. I therefore ask 
members of the committee, I also ask the administration, in particular the State Department, to reconsider the decisions taken and the actions taken in London and bring about an orderly transfer of power from this tiny, tightly necked group of military junta to a broadly based representative government in Addis Ababa with the unity and territorial integrity of the country intact. I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. In a referendum, they will have a number of alternatives to options to review before they make a decision on the ballot, so to speak. There'll be these four options before them. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Woody, you want to comment on the, uh, the need for referendum or the request for referendum in Eritrea? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I believe there is no need for any referendum. The, the reason one wants to have a referendum is to know the wishes and aspirations of the Eritrean people. Now, the Eritrean people, through several processes from, from the end of the Second World War, had gone through the acts and different stages of self-determination. The 1947 Four Great Powers Conference decided to set up a commission of investigation, sent that committee or commission to Eritrea to investigate on what the people of Eritrea wanted to do. That commission came with a recommendation that the majority of people wanted to associate themselves with Ethiopia. But later on, the Four Power Great Commission's responsibility shifted from there to the United Nations. And the United Nations set up a United Nations Commission for Eritrea, which had five members of it, three of whom were violently opposed against the, to the Ethiopian nation state, particularly Pakistan. That commission went to Addis Ababa, had ra attended rallies, went to churches, to a synagogue, to mosques, visited schools and factories and decided at the end of the day the vast majority of the people of Ethiopia want either total association with Ethiopia or some form of federal association. The commission went back to the United Nations and drafted a federal constitution for Eritrea, which was approved by the people through the Eritrean Assembly. And the, therefore, the decision on whether to belong or be member of Ethiopia has already been taken by the people of Eritrea. One cannot give the right of self-determination every 15 years or 20 years or every generation. And, but if it is found necessary at some point in the future for the people of Eritrea to decide the future, well then, since there are so many developments since the Second World War and the people of Ethiopia are affected in many ways through direct cultural, political and economic interrelationship, that opportunity or that referendum should be made available, should be made open to the people of Ethiopia and so that the people of Ethiopia should decide. And more importantly, it should also be suggested the decision on whether one should have a referendum in Eritrea or the whole of Ethiopia should be preceded by the democratization of the political life of the people of Eritrea and Ethiopia. Because if a referendum were to be held today, now in Eritrea, it will be held under the totalitarian control of the Eritrean People's Liberation Front, which is a totalitarian organization with all the nomenclatura of communist organizations elsewhere in Europe, in Eastern Europe. It had its cells and factories, in towns, in villages, and schools. And people will be forced, will be, will, will be forced, literally forced to vote for the referendum. There are some of us who cannot speak for the unity of Ethiopia, even in this country. We are harassed, harassed. Is it possible for an Eritrean living in Eritrea under these conditions to vote of his own free will? 
to join Ethiopia. And therefore, these are some of the considerations that have been taken into play. Here.